Hello, my name is Lakin and welcome to my channel. And in today's video, in honor of Mother's Day, I am reading my mom's favorite childhood books. I don't really know how this video is going to be edited. Gonna be part sit down, part reading vlog. At least a little bit. I'm trying this new thing out so that way I'm not spending hours and hours editing a whole bunch of different reading vlog clips because apparently I film way more than I need unless y'all want to watch a five hour long reading vlog. That's not what we're here for. We're here to talk about my mom's favorite childhood books since we can't spend Mother's Day together. I was like, this is, this will be what I do. And also during this video, you'll see me making the gift I made for my mom, which is this. Don't know if you can see it, but it is an embroidered portrait of me and my mother on my wedding day. It's a little janky up close. I still think it turned out pretty good. I definitely want to do a lot more of these because they were so much fun. Walter was able to actually go and pick up the books because she had all of them for me ready to read. <laughs> these books right here. And all of them are her original books that she read for the very first time, except for Old Yeller. But I thought that was so cool. I don't think I'm going to be able to give my kids my favorite childhood books, or at least the original ones, but I think it's cool that she has these still. So let's go ahead and start with the very first book I started this reading challenge off with. Okay, don't mind my makeup. I was just playing around, so if it's bad, don't at me, you know? <laughs> Just having fun. I'm not seeing anyone except for this camera, I guess, but you know, it's whatever. But I'm gonna start with my first book and I have four to pick from. I'm definitely not reading Old Yeller yet. I don't wanna read this at all, but you know, it's in the pile, so I gotta do it. I think I'll start with Joni. It is really, really broken, but I'll start with this one and try to take a lot of care in reading it because like, look at that. Like, it's just torn apart. <laughs> but it is the unforgettable story of a young woman struggles against quadriplegia and depression. Don't know if I said that word right, but I think it's like an autobiography and We'll see how this goes. My mom read this when she was in middle school and she has not reread it since. And she, this book stuck with her because of the tragic accident that happens and how positive this book is and how she is able to overcome that tragedy, which I completely agree. I love that part of it. My mom tore this book up. Not on purpose. I feel like I'm about to break this book. It is so, like, so much more fragile than I thought it was going to be. Like, my mom had said, hey, some of these books are delicate, just be careful. And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. I did not expect this. Oh my goodness. So, I'm kind of scared to touch it now. 
especially because I can't read it like a real book like I have to like lay it flat on a table so that way I can flip each page like this and not get them mixed up so I found an audiobook version on Hoopla so I'm gonna be using that that way I don't destroy one of my mother's favorite books Johnny 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 I feel really bad for not loving this book because not loving this book is kind of like me saying hey I don't like how you end up with your life like how you live your life I don't like that which no Everyone has the right to live their life however they want, and you do you. My frustrations that I have kind of also contradict what I love about it. I'm happy that she's able to find the good in it and make it not ruin her life, this tragic event that happened to her, but I don't know. This, this part right here, like, makes me feel a little uneasy, like, mmm, it, I don't know. I never feel comfortable whenever people talk like this. <laughs> I'm holding the page. It's the last paragraph in chapter two. Um, it says, now I was insistent with God. Lord, if you're really there, do something in my life that will change me and turn me around. You know how weak I was with Jason. You know how possessive and jealous I am with Dick. I'm sick of the hypocrisy. I want you to work in my life for real. I don't know how, I don't even know at this point if you can, but I'm begging you, please do something in my life to turn it around. I had prayed that prayer just a short time before my accident. Now lying encased in my striker frame, I wondered if somehow God was answering my prayer. I don't know, just like saying that like, the only way God could work in your life and help you become a better person is by you breaking your neck and losing your arms and legs. No. It's like she's pushing the emotions away and brushing them aside and being like, it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't feel like she's allowing herself to be angry or upset at what's happened in her life. I know she is looking back on it from when she was a teenager till now. Maybe the hope and the peace that I'm hearing during whenever it actually happened is just her looking back on it and having peace with what's happened to her hopefully because feeling emotions are healthy it's not healthy to push those emotions down and to shame yourself for feeling a certain way like just because you're a christian doesn't mean you can't be angry or frustrated or you can't question what's happening in your life. Jesus had every emotion we can think of. And he's the one we're supposed to be emulating. So like, it's okay. This Joni book. Johnny. Her name's Johnny, not Joni. This book is taking me so much longer to read. And I feel so bad. I find this book really annoying. And I feel bad because this is her life. This is her struggle. This is her coming to terms with her life experience. I was talking to my husband yesterday with reading this. And I would probably DNF this if it wasn't one of my mom's favorites. Or at least one of her childhood favorites. Even when she talks about her struggles and the times whenever she's angry and depressed. She still just comes around to being like, but it's okay. You know? And it's, it's totally a me thing because, again, it's really good that she doesn't just wallow and just, like, lay there and give up on life because of what she went through. Like, that's great. Apparently, I'm annoyed by optimism. 
but I do appreciate her and how she did not let what happened to her destroy her. I appreciate that she was able to rise from this terrible tragedy and use it as a speaking point to help other disabled people. She didn't lose her faith because of it. I'm not so certain, certain that I would have been as positive as she was if I went through what she went through. I would have loved to have seen more and her have talked more about her art because she is an artist. She creates art using a pencil and whatever in her mouth. And her art is really good. Not just for someone who is a quadriplegic. Even if she had all her limbs, this art is amazing. It is beautiful. And I love that she is able to find comfort in her religion and find comfort in her art and using it to better her life, you know? I do appreciate that the author is narrating it and it kind of sounds like it, she's telling an actual story more than a memoir like because she has like conversations with people and she like remembers all these emotions and feelings and like part of me is like how do you remember all this stuff like are you making it up or is your mind just that amazing it's probably the latter <laughs> but She's telling it like she's talking to a friend. So it sounds like she's like actually talking to you and not just narrating this book, which is interesting. Never heard an audiobook like that before. I love that she was able to overcome that, but I just didn't love how it was written out. The next book that I am picking up is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline. Lingle? No, probably not. This is the book that I've heard my mother talk about all the time. And I've wanted to read it because of her, because she talks about it all the time. Like I knew this one was gonna be on the list, you know, way before I even asked her. But it's one of those things where like someone tells you to read this or to watch this so many times that you're just kind of like, okay, but you'd like keep putting it off. So it's one of those things. So we'll see if I enjoy it. She read this for the first time in sixth grade and she has reread it since then, but she remembers this book so much because of the fantasy elements. And in sixth grade, this book was read to her by her teacher. Her imagination just went wild with all the different things, how they jump through wrinkles and Tesser and how all these different worlds and these different creatures. And I agree. This book, like I can totally see if I had read this when I was younger, like just imagining all these wild and bonkers things and just making the story even better. One, I love how this five-year-old boy is probably smarter than me. And I also, I keep imagining the um, latest Disney version with like uh, Reese Witherspoon and Oprah Winfrey and what's her name? I can't remember her name, but them as the... Um, Miss Who's It, Miss What's It, and Miss Witch. And I keep imagining them, but the, how they're described and stuff, like, sound, they sound old. <laughs> they sound like they're supposed to be, like, old ladies, and it's messing me up. But yeah, I'm enjoying this a lot. So far, my mom was right about this book. <laughs>
They say this boy's name so much. Charles Wallace, Charles Wallace, Charles Wallace, Charles Wallace. I've heard that name so much that I feel like I should name my kid Charles Wallace, if I ever have one. I probably won't, but you know, if. They gotta be named Charles Wallace, because <laughs> that's the only name I'm hearing through this whole book. Charles Wallace, Charles Wallace, Charles Wallace. And it has a nice ring to it, don't you think? I think so. Charles Wallace was definitely my favorite character. Meg, I understood completely where she was coming from, but she, she was a little whiny at times. This book was really good. I had been putting off reading it for so long. I'm really glad that I finally picked it up. Since I had enjoyed it just as much, she actually has the second book and she sent me a video of it and apparently she had taken the second book to a beach trip with her when she was younger and it accidentally got into the ocean. It's very puffy and I'm definitely going to be reading the others. It's a, there's four books in this series. After reading this, I ended up watching the Wrinkle in Time, the newest Disney version. They kept enough of the essence that I think it plays out really well. I don't know why I put this book off for so long. Next book I'm picking up is, I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> Raggedy Ann and Andy, a musical adventure. This book, I think it's a I think this is like a movie adaptation. Oh, oh my goodness. This book is bonkers. It's definitely from the 70s. Like, I can totally see this being a 70s fever dream. My mom loved it when she was younger. She definitely says she remembers the movie more, but she just loved how it was the adventures of a redheaded doll. My mom and I look basically identical. And this Raggedy Ann doll looked so much better than real Raggedy Ann dolls. Real Raggedy Ann dolls are very creepy, but this one, very cute. So this is basically just Toy Story, but way weirder. Uh, instead of Andy, we have Marcella, and it starts off as a birthday party as well, and she gets a new doll. The new doll is named Babette. It's a cute little French doll, and the French doll doesn't want to be there. And there is a snow globe that has a pirate in it and the pirate falls in love with Babette and kidnaps her by flooding the whole room with the water from the snow globe and the ship gets really big and kidnaps Babette and takes her away. And my mom says that is the most memorable part of this whole book is when the room floods, which, yeah. Especially in the movie, that pirate was so creepy. This toy is very creepy. No, thank you. I don't know what's going on here, but, mm. Seems fishy. They got fishnets and high heels, and I know they're humps, but <laughs> I don't know. Ugh. Nope. No. Just no. I would say if you are looking for a really cringy, uncomfortable laugh, like the lines in this and the music in the other one. Listen to this part right here. Anyone would feel the same, said Grandpa sympathetically. Who wants to be squashed all day? 
even by a French doll. Maxie grinned. I wouldn't mind. Okay. I feel like that's like, you know, in those kids' movies when they say adult jokes and the kids don't get, like, that's what I feel like right now with that. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty more of those as we read. This book is like a fever dream. Hardcore. <laughs> so funny. But not in like the like, it's actually good. It's so funny because like, what in the world is happening type of thing, you know? So Raggedy Ann and Andy, they're siblings. But Raggedy Andy keeps talking about Raggedy Ann like they're in a relationship. Like he just keeps mentioning how sweet her candy heart is and how she's the best person in the world. And like, I've never met any siblings that talk to each other like that. No. <laughs> At least mine, do. we don't talk to each other like that. We would talk to each other like that if we were making fun of each other, but not as serious as he is. I got more quotes. Mmm, the quotes. Come on, let's run, cried Raggedy Andy. Camel, get your wrinkled knees out of there. The camel with the wrinkled knees came out from the greedy's pudding of a body. Ew? Pudding of a body. And this is greedy. Nightmare inducing. That's who he is. I feel so bad for this camel because his name is Camel with the Wrinkled Knees. That's his name. That, that's not a name. That's a sentence. <laughs> I want to watch the movie of this because this is a movie adaptation like how they do when like frozen for little kid books like the movie comes out and then they put it in a little kid's books like this is what that is and i feel like i will either bless my eyes or burn my eyes if i find this and watch it <laughs> like i'm not feeling that good today like, I think I'm a little sick, but this book, giving me something to laugh at. Appreciation. The only scene that I would say skip in the movie is Mr. Greedy. Ugh. I can still hear the noises in my head of from the movie and it's very uncomfy do no zero out of ten but the rest of the book i don't know what i would give this <laughs> but the original movie is on youtube you just have to find it oh my goodness this book i could go on and on with how insane this book was in the movie and it's also in the book but you know oh this is too good to be true <laughs> the captain stole the bed away in his pirate ship stick him up huh? <laughs> the flag says you need help you need help <laughs> no you need help <laughs> i am the loony knight and Raggedy Ann and Andy are this book and movie, and they need help. I've read all the books. I have literally only one book left, so I can't put it off anymore. 
Here we go. Old Yeller. I already know the dog dies. As a child, and even now, I refuse to watch this movie. And I've refused to read this book until now. If it wasn't for this video and if it wasn't for my mom, I wouldn't be doing it. So this shows you, mom, how much I love you. I'm willing to read a book where a dog dies. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> At least it's tiny. This book stuck with my mom because of the dog and also the fight scene at the end just has embedded this book in her brain and I can totally see why. We're on page five, and a dog has already died. Mowgli, you gotta protect me from this one. Yeah. I did not want to read this book. I've had no interest ever in reading this book. I've never watched the movie because, you know, I don't want to watch a dog die. Sorry, that may make me weird, but it's just not for me. <laughs> but it was on this list, so I read it. And even though I knew it was coming, it said it in the beginning. And when it got close to the end, I knew it was coming. And I prepared myself for it. I still cried. The dog was the best part of this book. Five stars for him. <laughs> Two stars for Travis. If the dog hadn't have died, this would have been an amazing story. It's a nice coming of age. It's a nice learning to love type of story. And that dog was just the best dog ever. I thought it was a little boring at times, but that was just because it was describing everyday, normal, old west type of life. But parts with the dog and the younger brother were quite funny and I do see why this book is so prevalent and I can totally see why it stuck with my mom. So those are the books I read. Hopefully this video makes a little sense. Hopefully it's not too chopped up. We'll see <laughs> once I start editing it. But yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And to my mom specifically, thank you. Not only for allowing me to read your books, but also for allowing me to become the person I am today. I love you, mom. I don't call her mom. I call her mama or mother. But every time I call her mother, I just think of Norman Bates. <laughs> I love you and hope I did your books justice. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye!